This is the Mercedes EQC. It costs 1.06 CR out in the market. It's luxurious, it's beautiful, and most importantly, it's electric. But if you peel off the shell, the basic principles that this car runs on, that is the battery and the motor, is very similar in all electric vehicles. But that being said, it's far less complicated than an ICE-driven car or an internal combustion engine. This is Aurelius from Mashable India and in today's episode of India's EV revolution, we're going to be discussing all the tech that makes the EV car run. Hey Ori, car ki light on karna, must dekhegi. Nahi yaar, battery bachani padegi. As a kid, I spent a lot of time disassembling RC cars only to make another RC car. Now, mere ghar ke aaju baju, teeno baju mein khet rehte the aur inhi khet mein pani jaane ke liye bandh rehte the. Ye pani ke bandh mere liye mere testing grounds the, jahan pe main in RC cars ka RC boat bana ke chalata tha. Imagine the EQC or any other electric vehicle as a giant RC drivable car if we could peel off the shell and I really don't want to do it because I do want to receive other Mercedes cars as well. The basic principle that even this car runs on that is the battery and the motor are the same. I'm not even including the brakes and the steering wheel that's to steer and to stop. That's exactly how an EV car works. But then there's a lot more going on and that's what we're going to talk about starting with the motor. Now there are five types of electric motors that are used by different manufacturers for construction of their EV vehicles. If you want to know more about these electric motors, do leave us a comment and if you're new, do like and subscribe. In the Mercedes EQC, we have two three-phase AC motors. One is in the front dedicatedly powering the front two wheels and there is one at the back dedicatedly powering the rear two wheels. Some manufacturers use one motor either on the front or back but Mercedes has gone for two. And since these motors use no drive shaft between each of them, just in the front and back, there's a lot of space between which is filled by the battery. And because these are electric motors, what I get is instant torque the moment I press my foot down. <laughs> and that's how most of the electric vehicles leave IC vehicles back biting at the dust. The battery pack on this EQC is a 6 module 384 cell lithium ion pack which sits under the floorboard keeping the center of gravity extremely low. Now lithium ion batteries are also found on our cell phones but as a weight comparison my cell phone along with the battery pack is 240 grams. The battery cell pack on this EQC which is an 80 kilowatt hour battery is 636 kilograms which effectively gives me a range of anywhere between 361 kilometers to 400. Had the battery pack been larger, even my range would increase, but that would also significantly increase the size and the weight of the battery pack. The power on this battery pack is stored in DC voltage, but the two three-phase AC motors run on AC voltage. And that's the reason why the next very component is very important, which is the inverter. The inverter plays a very important role in an EV vehicle especially when it comes to converting AC into DC and DC into AC. The power in the battery, as I mentioned earlier, is stored in DC voltage. But the motors on the EQC run on AC power voltage, so it needs to convert that. Also, when you're charging this vehicle, it needs to convert AC into DC. There is an additional inverter, a smaller one, which is installed by some of the manufacturers on their cars that converts DC into AC but at a 12 volt output so that other components of the car like the display, the LEDs and the onboard computer can run. There are some manufacturers who install an independent battery that you'd see in an IC vehicle as well to power these components. The second option is much more safer is because you're isolating the high powered battery which holds the DC voltage and isolating it from the smaller components. So in case there is a leakage of power, you will not burn out your car. The last but also a very important component in an EV vehicle is the thermal management or its cooling system. If the temperatures are very low, the range of a car will drop. But if the temperatures are extreme, the batteries start to degrade very faster. They work best between the temperatures of 15 degrees to anywhere between 35 degrees Celsius. And that's one of the main reasons why the batteries have to be maintained at an optimum or the ideal temperatures for longer ranges and better battery life. ये सोच के तो बहुत लोग पूछते रहेंगे यार मगर जब गाड़ी धूप पे खड़ी रहेंगी तो बैटरी ओवरहीट नहीं होगा। वैसे तो आपकी सोच बहुत ही वैलिड है, मगर ये इंजीनियर्स ने ऑडी फैक्टर किया है 
बैटरी जो है वो गाड़ी के बेस या अंडर बॉडी में बैठती है जिसकी वजह से रेडिएंट हीट जो रहता है वो उसकी तरफ इतना नहीं पहुंचता है तो बैटरी टेम्परेचर इतना नहीं भी स्पाइक होता है अगर आपकी गाड़ी धूप पे खड़ी रहे सो इंजीनियर्स हैव रियली थॉट अबाउट इट एंड इफ यू वर्ड दैट योर कार विल कैच फायर इन केस इट स्टैंडिंग आउट इन द सन दैट्स नॉट गोना हैपन बट इफ द इंजीनियर्स हैव नॉट फिगर दैट आउट इन द कार यो बाइंग एंड दैट शुड वर यू बट यू वॉट दे हैव ऑलरेडी फिगर्ड इट आउट Now that's about all the tech that goes into an EV car. Now there are 150 moving parts in an electric vehicle. Compare that to an ICE car, that's around 10,000 parts. What that means is there is less wear and tear on these cars as compared to the other counterparts. So there's less maintenance on these cars. Now this has been an episode where we have discussed all the tech that goes into an EV car. In the next episode let's talk about the different brands in India and the different EV cars that they have to offer and possibly even discuss the upcoming EV cars. This is Aurelius from Mashable India. Have a good evening. Ayan.